Ah, muy buenas noches y felicitaciones. Congratulations to all of you. I am so excited. And and thank you, Michelle. We at NEA, we are so so proud of you. And where's Gay from Utah? Where are you? I, and 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 Sharon says hi. And I just have to tell you um, that I know what's going through your mind because. In 1989, 22 years ago, I was sitting right back there where Gay was as the Utah Teacher of the Year. I was 12 years old, and I know what you're thinking. It's this wonderful, weird combination of I'm not worthy, and this is so cool, and, and, and it's just the most amazing thing. It's a surreal experience going from sitting around the faculty room, you know, chatting with all your friends about your opinions about education and concerns and complaining about what you don't have and then having to deal with what you do have and making magic with that. And now someone has actually put a microphone in your hand and asked you to give those opinions and concerns and dreams to a public audience. Don't be shy. Do not let it enter your mind that you are not worthy. You have been given an incredible gift of being heard. I talk a lot. It doesn't mean I'm always heard. People are going to listen to you in a very, very different way. You are here. It's not an accident. You are here because you are a shining example of the best of who we are. Um, and people are going to think that you have all the answers, that you know everything. I find people who think they know everything are so annoying to those of us who actually do. Um, <clears throat> People are going to ask you a million questions, and I know we have been trained. We know that there are no stupid questions. I am here to tell you there are some stunningly stupid questions, and you are going to hear all of them. Um, I was sitting next to a very nice gentleman on a plane, and uh, he was chatting, and he told me his job and where he was going. He said, so what do you do, darling? And I said, well, I'm a teacher, and I work with the National Education Association, and he stopped smiling. And he said, I've heard about you people. I've heard all those teachers. He said, I hear you need this, and then I hear you need that, and then I hear you need something else. And to tell you the truth, darling, I'm a little tired of hearing it, and I want you to bottom line it for me right now and tell me once and for all, what is the single thing we need that would solve all of our problems in public schools? And I said, simple, what we really need are fewer people who think there's one single thing that would solve all of our problems in public schools. He put on the headphones and watched the movie. We did not bond, I wouldn't say. But my point is, and this time I do have one, um, he is not the enemy. He is our audience. The public schools belong to him. And it's up to us now to get him to hear what we have to say. We have to convince him what we are trying to accomplish when we say we demand a great public school for every blessed child. Now, you know, <laughs> you know how we struggle these days to help the public understand what education means to that whole child, that it means so much more than what can fit on a standardized test. I wish I hadn't been so snotty uh, to that nice man. I wish I had told him a story. I wish I had put a face on what it is that I do with students. I wish I had told him about Julio. Julio was one of my students when I taught at the homeless shelter school in Salt Lake City. Julio was eight. He was in third grade. He was probably the angriest human being I have ever met on the planet. He hated his parents for making him live in the shelter. He hated the teachers for making him pretend this was a real school. He hated the other kids for getting in his space. He could read, but he wouldn't. 
Uh, he wouldn't sing, although I did once get him to sing an entire chorus of our theme song, Don't Stick Your Finger Up Your Nose Because Your Nose Knows It's Not the Place It Goes. And he sang it with dignity. Um, and he hit, and he hit, and he hit everybody. And I tried everything to teach him to control himself, to respect the other kids. Nothing worked. So I had no choice. I had to make him the teacher. I made him the teacher because my mother is from Panama. I'll explain. Um, <laughs> my mother, hi mom, yes, uh, did not teach her children Spanish. Um, but she regrets that, and she's making up for it by nagging us to all take Spanish lessons, which I did, but I'm really bad at doing my homework. Um, I blame the teacher for not motivating me. Um, and one day, I was on playground duty conjugating verbs for the class, and it was due that night, and I heard Julio yell something that I'm sure was very, very nasty uh, to a friend across the playground in beautiful Spanish, and I got the best teacher idea I have ever got in my life, and I said, Julio, ven aquí, ayúdame, te necesito, which I really hope means come over here, I need you to help me. Whatever it was I said, um, he came over and he was intrigued. He said, what? I said, my mom's going to kill me if I don't pass this class, you got to help me with my homework. So he sat on the bench and he, he corrected my pronunciation and he went, no, that's not Isaiah. And he kept saying uh, helpful, encouraging things like, estupida maestra loca. <laughs> which he told me means, good job. <laughs> I said, hey, gracias, mis, uh, mi, mi uh, maestro. I said, thank you, teacher. And then I said, it's time to go in, get the kids lined up. And he got the kids lined up. And when we went inside, I said, maestro, I'll get the second graders on the computer. You read to the kindergartners till I can get over there. And he read to the kindergartners, and they listened. And by the end of the week, he didn't even ask me if I needed help. He just came over, and he'd come in and say, OK, I'm here. And I said, oh, buenos dias, maestro. I've been waiting for you. Can you do the color flashcards with Chester? And he walked away going, man, she can't do nothing without me. <laughs> and he did the color flashcards with Chester. Now, I'm really sneaky. I told Julio, I said, you are such a good teacher. You know, you should go to college, and then you can come back here and be a teacher with me at the shelter school. And he just laughed. He said, I ain't going to be no teacher. When I go to college, I'm going to be a wrestler with the World Wrestling Federation. <laughs> he said, when I go to college. You tell me that is not adequate yearly progress. Julio was at the shelter school for about three months. He never liked living there, but he stopped hitting the other kids. He uh, read out loud to the kindergartners. He helped me tune my guitar. He found status and honor in who he was in the skills that he brought. Who he was in my classroom was nurtured and treasured and shared with the other students. He was their maestro. He was my maestro. I always think of Julio as one of my favorite teachers. And one of my greatest success stories, although I'm not sure I could prove it by his results on a standardized test score. I wish that I had told the man on the plane about Julio. I wish I had told him all of the things that we do and that of all the things we need, there is nothing that we need more than to make sure every child has a caring competent, professional teacher who cares about the whole child, 360 degrees inside out, body, body, mind, and soul. Teaching especially those things that cannot fit on a standardized test. Someone else um, in some research department can back up everything I say, but <laughs> you and I are not researchers. We are not here because we know the statistics. We are here because we know the names of the boys and girls that we love. 
we are here because it is a perk of our profession that we sometimes become better professionals, but we always become better human beings because of the lessons we learn from our boys and girls. Tell the world why you are the teacher of the year. Tell the world your students' stories. Tell the world why you love someone else's child. You have been handed a microphone. That means you have been handed an incredible opportunity, but an incredible responsibility. You have been handed that microphone because there is no doubt, no cabe duda, that you are a worthy messenger. Buena suerte, mis hermanos y hermanas. Y mil gracias por este honor. Thank you and good luck.